Hello everybody, today we're going to be talking about knife skills and we'll be reviewing first knife safety. So our lesson objectives today throughout our lesson will be able to demonstrate knife safety knowledge we have learned already in class. We're going to be able to read and follow a recipe and then identify and perform basic knife cuts and identify the steps in cutting an onion. So let's review first. Which is safer to use, a dull knife or a sharp knife? A sharp knife is safer because if you use a dull knife, you have to put more pressure to be able to cut, so it's gonna be more likely to slip and cause an injury. All right, next question, true or false? It is safe to put a knife in a sink full of dishwater when doing dishes. Correct answer is false. Why is that? Because if you put your, you have um, all your dishes together in the sink, you put your hand in to grab the dishes or the knife, um, you could likely cut the, grab the blade and then cut yourself. So remember, if you really need to soak the knife to get it really clean, use a cup full of soapy water, put the blade down and handle up so that when you grab it, you know you're gonna be safely grabbing the handle of the knife. Uh, what is the proper way to store a knife? Um, correct answer, in a knife block or in a, with a blade guard so that you're covering the blade so you don't accidentally grab the blade when you go to get the knife out. And out of reach of children. So this little guy here um, can re reach that knife and definitely can cause a lot of injury to himself by grabbing the blade of that knife. Okay, next, what should you do if the knife slips out of your hands and falls? You want to step back, get out of the way so that it doesn't accidentally cut yourself. You don't want to try to grab it because, again, we probably don't have the ninja skills to grab the handle. We're probably going to accidentally grab the blade. And it's better to let it fall, possibly damage the floor, than to have to go to the emergency room. Um, so don't try to catch that blade. All right, so proper way to hold a knife is you're gonna be holding it close to the, the handle, very close to the blade so you have more control. And then your other hand, instead of having your hands flat where your, your fingers can get in the way of the knife, you're gonna have a claw so that that helps guide the blade of the knife and avoids cuts. So today we're gonna to make some Play-Doh and we'll go through that here in a little bit, but you have um, salt and flour you're going to mix those together and then put in colored water slowly until you get Play-Doh consistency. So we'll do that together here in a minute. And then once we have Play-Doh, um, just a kind of an or overview of what to expect, we're going to um, form the Play-Doh into kind of a log, just to be like a carrot. Um, and then we're going to do a rondelle knife cut, and that would be just slicing the carrot regularly. We'll do a bias cut a little more fancy, and then an oblique cut. And again, I'll show you those here in a minute. And then we're gonna flatten out the Play-Doh so it'd be like a piece of lettuce or um, something like that. And then we're gonna roll it up to make a chiffonade cut. Um, then we're gonna put the Play-Doh Play into a ball to make like a potato. And we'll do a few more cuts. Um, this would be like you might be making french fries. It's about a quarter of an inch wide. Uh, Julianne is about an eighth of an inch, kind of sometimes called a matchstick cut. We'll also learn cu to cube, which is about a half inch cube on each side. Uh, we'll be dicing, which is about a quarter of an inch on each side, so we'll keep it a little bit smaller. And then we'll mince, which is about an eighth of an inch. Um, and then we'll also be looking at how to cut an onion properly. Um, so if you have questions, again, we'll We'll, continue, we'll get to those as we go through this demonstration. Alright, so in your kit, you have a bag of flour, a bag of salt, and a knife and some papers. So what we're going to do first is make our Play-Doh. So you open the bag, and Put your salt into the flour, seal it up, and then just mix it around. Okay. 
Then we're going to take a glass of water and you can pick your color of food coloring. But we're going to add the food coloring to the water so that we have um, a more even color. Now we want to slowly add the flour to the water, the water to the flour. It doesn't take a lot, but a little at a time. And then we're going to mix it around. And that will continue until you get the consistency of Play-Doh. You add too much, it'll be slimy. So you have to make sure that you're really working with it. And you need a bag for you to, to mix that water around um, into that dough. So you continue that until you have a play that looks like, like this. Um, and at some point, you'll need to take it out and just kind of knead it and play with it so that it is in that consistency that you want for play -Doh. So what we're going to do with the Play-Doh is we're going to practice our knife skills. And so we're going to pretend this is um, the carrot or the, the lettuce or the potato um, as we go through. So what we're going to start with is we're using the paper that is in the page protector. That's our cutting board. And so we're going to start with that rondel slice of a carrot. We're just going to take our Play-Doh and roll it out into a log. You don't need all of it, it's a small portion. We're using plastic bags today, so you're going to um, make sure that you have your cloth of your fingers. You will hold your knife up close to your blade. And then with the you cut, you really just need to rock the knife and push down to cut through it. Now with the Play-Doh, it kind of smashes it. So if you want a nice cut, you're going to actually do a sawing motion and that'll give you a little bit nicer of a round, round cut. So that cocktail, you know, it can squish it a little bit, but you'll have those slices. So there's the bondo slices. And then what we're going to do is just take a couple of those pieces, and we're going to keep for each, each cut one on your blank grid so that you have examples of each one that you finish. So go ahead and add a couple of my the slices of my carrot to the package. And then I'm going to do um, another cut with that same type of wall. So this time we're going to do the bias cut. And so we're going to so as a little bit of an angle. And this will look a little fancier with when you're cutting your pieces to have that bias cut. And so try that. Some of them are going to look a little better than others. So I'm going to take a few of those pieces and that 
bias those on And the last one I'm going to do with this carrot that we're using today is an oblique cut. And so that oblique cut, we're going to make a cut diagonally. And we're going to roll the carrot to the side and then we're going to make a diagonal cut. So it's going to look like a triangle. I'm going to take a couple of those to put them in the chart to show that it's weak. The next one is a chiffonal. And so that is where we need to look at your your like, lettuce or all of the green. And so we're just going to flatten out a piece of Play-Doh. Into that leaf. And then we're going to take it and we're just going to roll it up. And then again, we're going to just slice through this. And unfortunately, it's kind of smashing it together, um, but you get the idea of what that would, be, that would look like. One on my chart, and then we're going to move on to the rest of the cuts. It will look more like a, um, that we're going to use for potato, so it's a round ball for. I'm going to use all the rest of the potato that I have. And turn that into the ball. Now, these, when you're cutting the potato, it's good to square it off. So I'm going to just make it into a block. So now we're going to start with looking at, we'll make this into um, about quarter inch slices. And that will have a rectangle there that we can now make into those. It's like that quarter inch and fifteen. So it can be fries or carrots for a, a veggie tray. And so there's that. Now for using that, we're going to dice the other pieces though. So we're going to put a few more pieces together. We're just going to put a quarter inch dice along. And then we want to do a 
cube. So that one's about half an inch. So we'll make a bigger chunk with that. Use your roller to make sure it's actually the right size. Just be estimating then we have your cube. Put those in a point. And then the next thing we'll do is a Julian. So it's more of a matchstick. And so as thin as you can get with Play-Doh, we're going to try to make a real thin slice. And then we're going to again make a real thin slice on on the slice on it. So then we have those Julian matchstick. That to mince because the mince is about like a quarter inch as well. So we lay those out together. And we are real small, about quarter inch pieces. And we have some mince pieces that we can put. Yeah, they're going to pull to their vegetables. I'll hope they're shaping a little bit better. And so when you're done, we have those examples of the Play-Doh.